welcome to another episode of the Alien Scientists Science and Controversy Hour, where we discuss the most controversial uh, topics in science and um, talk about the future and what it's going to be like the present right now and uh, the powers that shouldn't be and how we need to collectively assemble and use technology to uh, free ourselves from the enslavement uh, control grid being set up currently around us in, in the world today. Um, and free ourselves from uh, problems such as energy and uh, and um, tr transportation. So, the views and p opinions expressed on this program, uh, sorry, the views and opinions expressed on this program from week to week do not necessarily reflect the views of our Zen Live TV producers, myself, or the guests that I may have on the show from week to week. Everyone has different opinions on different things, and we like to get a, di a broad spectrum of different ideas and different uh, viewpoints on a lot of different topics, especially with controversial subjects that we cover on the show. So uh, just keep that in mind that um, you don't need, need to, if, if something is discussed on my show, don't uh, don't don't worry about it. It's not the producer's fault. It's just uh, the get, it's whoever says whoever says it, not not whoever's broadcasting it. And uh, don't shoot the messenger. Anyways, uh, I'm still looking for a producer. Uh, my producers are still looking for a uh, partner um, to sponsor the show. Uh, Two hundred bucks a month, and you get um, show once a week. Uh, I'll get ads on my show at the beginning and end of all the broadcasts on my videos, and I'll put some ads on my website for you too. I'm still looking for a sponsor. Please contact me if you've got a business or product you'd like to advertise through our show, and um, we'll do what we can to uh, design custom commercials and set things up for you to help uh, you boost your business and your or your product, whatever you whatever you want. Um, so, anyways, uh, this week I'm going to have my friend on Matt, and uh, he waiting for him to show up uh, in studio now. He's on his way over here, and um, but we'll we'll start off with a couple other things. Matt was on the first very first episode that I did of this. Uh, broadcast and uh, we sort of talked about um, propaganda and and a lot of other things um, in ma as, as far as mass media and manipulation goes he's been on a couple uh, uh, been a contributor on a lot of uh, other videos that I've done on these related subjects to um, perception and uh, mind control how the brain works uh, he's a really interesting guy he started off in neuroscience and um, eventually realized that neuroscience and just looking at the brains and like the brain like a computer wasn't exactly the, the best way to do it and so um, he got into phenomenology instead and a lot of philosophy and, and stuff like that um, instead of uh, the neuroscience after a while and um, he's just got a really interesting perspective on a lot of different things he's helped me with a lot of different stuff in the past so uh, we can't wait for him to show up in the meantime I'll run through some news and what's going on I was uh, I was waiting for the week. I, I tried to upload before upload upload the video right before I left from last week's broadcast, and uh, something happened with it. I'm not quite sure. Um, I had to take it down and, and uh, repost it, um, but I didn't get to repost it until I got back here, uh, which was Friday because I was gone all week. So, um, I, unfortunately, uh, that that last week's show just showed up today, and uh, so so um, those of you who are wondering about what happened there, um, last week I had. Uh, Colin Hicks on, and Colin Hicks is a f fellow. Um, he's a fellow licensee of ET3, and we talked a lot about the evacuated tube transports, uh, some of these uh, transportation technologies and whatnot in the f of the future. And uh, that was an interesting show. Uh, really interesting to get people on. We're also going to take live calls today. Um, if you are out there and you uh, want to call into the show, you have any questions, any subjects you want want to get my perspective or opinion on. Um, I may not have researched the subject, so you know I can't answer everyone's question. I can't, uh, but I definitely will uh, check out certain things if you, if uh, people point me in the right directions. So if you want to call into the show live, uh, the number is nine one four five nine five four eight seven one. So if you want to call in, uh, and we'll be saying we'll be posting that number throughout the show uh, a couple times, so people can call in if they want if they want to and uh, once again that number is nine one four five nine five four eight seven one and uh, this was only goes for live uh, the live show if you're watching this live uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. if you're just watching this on YouTube that number probably is not going to get through to anyone or if it does it will be something else so <laughs> you won't be able to get through to the show and ask me questions so anyways if, if you're listening to this live and uh, please call in if you have any questions and um, we're in, in for some interesting stuff today. Um, 
my friend uh, my friend Matt is going to be joining us. In fact, he's here right now in studio live. Amazing, huh? Perfect timing. How's it going? Look at the technology. And uh, so um, we're going to be talking today a little bit about um, mind control, mass media manipulation, and, and how uh, a handful of people can literally fool the entire world and uh, fool mass numbers of people into not believing things, believing different things. and uh, Controlling the way that they interpret what they see, you know, the way that they create their own realities. Um, so to go back to the very create. beginning, one of the most interesting sort of points to talk about this stuff about and sort of researched is if you go back to the beginning of the Associated Press in the late 1800s, uh, you had a single company who set up most of the news wires throughout the most of the world. And they had they which, had the Which ability, company was this? Uh, it was Associated Press. Associated Press. So, and what they did was they created the news wires for most of the world. And if information of news would go from one country to another, they would be sort of... Uh, the unit that would move it from place to place. And as a result, they could choose what they would cover and what they wouldn't cover. And as a result, the world would hear about things or not hear about things based on you know, was whatever in, was in their interests and stuff like that. And it's just from the very get-go, a very good understanding of people's relationship with what's going on in the world many times comes from media or what they should believe or what they are exposed to or not. And it frames an understanding of a world that they make decisions on or whether they support things or whether they go along with things is based on how they think about that type of mental model. I think that's important to understand where media is at today and what the mainstream media and what it is today. In order to understand that, you really have to go back and look at its history and look at the history of all those things. But also, uh, um, yeah, I definitely would want to talk about some more of the history of, of mass media mind control. But also, that there's, there's this whole idea that, um, you know, alternative media on the internet and whatnot is, is ma making big breakthroughs and stuff. And, Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, and lots of things are going on. But a lot of people have this notion that, that the internet is sort of this wrecking ball to this house of cards. I don't know if you have that, that picture you can queue up with the house, house deck, the house of cards there. With uh, it's it's a little pyramid. The well, absolutely. People think that the internet's just going to be this giant wrecking ball that's going to come through and crash down the mainstream media. And to a, to a certain degree, it has been. I mean, the mainstream media uh, the viewership and their numbers are just dropping like uh, like dropping. flies. I mean, yeah, absolutely, because their credibility over and over again uh, has been failing uh, because they serve the interests of advertisers and corporations who provide money to their station to run in the first place. Many of them. Uh, get their advertising from large corporations who represent hundreds of firms as far as advertising. Right. And the same way, you know, I always ask people, when's the last time you heard a, a sports figure s publicly stand up against the president or something that's going on since Muhammad Ali with Vietnam? Yeah, um, right. In the corporate sphere, there's very little room to have critique of corruption and things with inside of that sphere. And people who come into it, they either sign contracts that, you know, they if they talked bad about it, it's slander of their own company. They right. realize they don't want to talk bad about advertisers or bring money to their media company as well. So well, even back then with Muhammad Ali, he was in boxing, which is a is individual sport. It's not like it's the not NFL a whole team or, the NBA, or something like that. Stuff like that, they have to sign contracts and they're, they're trying. Absolutely, out. I think there was one situation. I forget where it was. It was a soccer game somewhere else in the world uh, where there was some sort of corrupt corporate practice going on that was doing horrible things to the. The, it was a coal community or something. And one of the, the players had a message under his shirt where after scoring a touchdown, kind of lifted up his shirt and showed the message to try to get it out to the rest of the world. Hmm. Um, and he got fired and kicked off the team, oh, really? uh, off the league as a result of that. Did the media he, ignore it or did they, did they pick up on it? At the time, I, d I wasn't really following it. It's something I read afterwards. Hmm. But it just shows that there's, there's very little tolerance uh, for critique within the, main, within the corporate sphere when it's presented and propped up by the money of the corporate sphere. Right, because the corporations pay to get their advertising on the, on the football. And so people watch football on Sundays or Mondays, whatever. It, it, they, they see the, uh, the advertisements. Absolutely. So they're you know, paying the NFL all their, all their big bucks that they get because how do you think they can afford to pay these athletes millions of dollars a year? Absolutely. It's from the advertising, from the money that they get from these big corporations who are funding them. And, and the same TV station who's getting paid by McDonald's to say this game is brought to you by, by McDonald's right. is not going to be... Olympics brought they're, to you They're going to be the last TV station to run the op-ed piece on why McDonald's is unhealthy or reasons right. not to buy it. 
Um, what Same you thing with them running the Olympics, man. It's just a joke. It's like the, one of the most unhealthy things you can eat. Uh, you're being promoted on on the oh uh, yeah on the Olympics. Athletic, the Olympics. Man. It, it's not about <laughs> integrity. It's about producing money and using platforms that allow a lot of advertising and viewership to be had. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a perfect example of. Well, there is a rise of this uh, alternative media on the internet now. A lot of a lot of people are going to alternative forms of media, and that's sort of what I, I've caught that wave years ago when I started my channel and everything because I saw like the mainstream media is not telling people the truth. We need alternative media to be able to get, bring people a truthful message in different ways. So I, that's why I started making my own videos and stuff. And I sort of had this naive uh, notion uh, that we were go the internet was going to be this just wrecking ball that was going to take down the house of cards and stuff. But now it's been like a few years, eight years since I, I really began that 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 quest to sort of uh, try to try to get information out through the internet and um, hoping that the you know the mass media would just eventually lose so much of their credibility altogether. But that hasn't completely happened. There's a lot of the with a lot of the younger generation, it has. I think the younger generation is on the, the internet. The older generation. The internet. I, just one thing is what I do is uh, one of my jobs is I fix computers. I go house to house, so I get to see a lot of different demographics of age groups and, and different types of people. And you can always see what they're watching in the background on TV. Um, so the older generations, they've built up, you know, the way that they figured out what was going on in the world was based on newspapers, based on, you know, mainstream media TV when it came out, you know. Um, in many ways, that information is very linear. You have an organization telling you how to interpret something, showing you what they want to, you know, expose you to or not. Uh, the brilliance of alternative media and internet uh, research is that you can check multiple points. You can cross-reference things. You don't need to take something at face value because it's the only thing you were told. You have the ability to check up on that in relation to other things, um, especially once you start seeing examples of media lying, um, you know, it, from the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq to the coverage of so many different things. Um, in many ways, they, they're an echo chamber for what the current administration wants to say, right? And, and they're not asking the hard questions. They're Highlighting selling, selling things like Justin Bieber getting arrested and, and <laughs> just nonsense. Oh well, yeah, it's either distraction. It, it, well, one thing that's very interesting. Um, in, in the eighties, news promo promotions for actually advertisements for things like passed off as news that happens a lot too. It's called well info. Well, there's infotainment is basically what it is. A very interesting um, story or just sort of history of, of the development of media. Uh, during the 80s, uh, a lot of media companies uh, neared bankruptcy. And there was this huge problem where they didn't have enough money to do the research for the different programs and uh, just the research for op-ed pieces about covering different topics. So what they started doing was they'd focus on more entertainment type things. Or they'd take a single person, this is Ted, and in, in Ted's life such and such happens and this is the battle from Ted's perspective about what's going on. And by doing these type of techniques, they can limit the discussion of what's talked about just based on to a black and white scenario of what that one person experiences, rather than maybe what was going on. Um, but in many ways, right, a lot of they, those people have this this idea that if I'm not hearing about it on TV, then it, then it can't be real, or it must then not it can't be, be real. real. Like or especially when you're hearing about Michael, you know, you're hearing about Britney Spears and you know all these other types of entertainment things, where you're just like, this really isn't valuable to hear about. It may be entertaining to some people, but to think, why would they be flooding the air with all this stuff? Like, you know, of course I'm hearing about everything that's happening if they have time to tell me about right. pop artists and stuff like that. Right. Um, a perfect example is the $2.3 that was missing from the Department of Defense on September 10th, 2001, the day before 9-11. Uh, Rumsfeld has publicly announced this. There's actually the video of him explaining it. But I talked to a lot of people about this $2.3 trillion, huge amount of money. It was almost half the national debt at the time disappearing from the Department of Defense. And a lot of people would say it was the day before. So, but, but a lot but of people a lot were of saying other were, money missing from the Pentagon, but that doesn't even get covered at all either. Well, well sure, but the, I would try to bring this up to people to inform them about like, do you care that they lost two point three trillion dollars? That you right. have to pay eight thousand dollars each person in America has to pay eight thousand dollars to make up for that mistake. Yeah. And a lot of them said, I would have heard about that if it were true. And I have the the C-SPAN congressional hearings on it. I have the documentation. It's very well documented in public record they just never had exposure to it and they were so used to thinking that they would be told about things that were important that if something is so big and they weren't told about it they almost feel like it can't be true right. because they would have heard about it 
and 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 that's well, the, the point where people stop trusting this. the media because they realize that they well, hear that argument a lot with 9-11 and stuff too like people will always say oh if this was a if it was really an inside job and all this stuff all the journalists will be clamoring over the opportunity to cover a story like that oh uh, yeah and yet why is none of these top journalists publishing big you know front end front page news articles or pay you know exposés if there was any truth to this then they would be they'd be all over a, there's a, a lot of scholars like just like, Oh, of no, course, it, there's it, so many professors who are covering it, but what happens Well, no, is, it's happened in the media, too, where people have covered it, but instead of getting the promotion or getting this mass recognition, they, they get, get fired. Attacked or attacked or fired, or, yeah. yeah. Um, let me think of an example. Uh, Abby Martin, uh, when she she came out, she she got attacked pretty severely because of uh, her views on 9-11, and, and uh, she had actually got her, I think, to back away from it. I haven't seen her talk about or cover that issue since uh, that last... In that last video I did, uh, res we were responding to some of the comments she withheld, or she she made a post on 9/11 Blogger, and it caused a Absolutely. bunch of controversy. And stuff. Another thing that holds it in place is um, I, I've done a lot of research of just reading up on the sort of the background of how the media structure works, how certain case studies of, of deception, of censorship in the past have been planned out through PR campaigns, executed, documented afterwards, as far as how well they went. I mean, it's a process of them learning from their techniques of propaganda. So. In the right sources, it's very well documented. Um, right, they see how well it works and stuff. But yeah, so one of the big things, even as Mark Dice was pointing out with the, with uh, his thing that he picked up on with the um, Obama letting all the immigrants out of out of out of jail or whatever, even if they are like murderers or child molesters and all this other stuff. Yeah, and he let it like literally letting them all out like, um, and I don't know, he went around and did a petition, I guess, just to see how people would react to it. And I guess the Obama administration. I don't know if they they picked up on on specifically Mark Dice's thing, but uh, I guess they're they're doing it or something. Uh, I don't know. There was some. But yeah, just seeing that. how people would respond to such a thing and seeing you know how far gone people right. are going to go. Right. If people don't. But yeah. but part of the thing that leads to that sort of that I wanted to touch on really quick is the gatekeepers of of these big issues. Um, even if a, a a researcher or a journalist stumbles across it and wants to cover it, in the old days before the seventies and eighties, media used to be based on. They wanted to provide coverage of, of socially significant things that would influence people's future, that actually mattered in the future so that people would buy the, the magazine. The reason back in the day was people wanted to be informed, not just entertained. Right. And what ended up shifting was it, it used to be um, an upside down pyramid where the bottom of the pyramid was at the top. So all the people were at the top of the pyramid. And the news groups were at the bottom giving the people what they wanted because they wanted to get the sales. They didn't want to print something that people didn't want to read at yeah. that point. But what's happened is that the pyramids flipped where over time they installed chief editors into these publications and stuff. And you have this this editor who gets to say, this story runs or this story doesn't run. Yeah. And you flip the pyramid where there's a single person at the top and he gets to decide what from the bottom gets to be shown or not. And if you're a journalist and you want to make a career and you want to make money, the third time you bring up a, a vote rocking issue that's like a really, you know, deep corruption issue and you're told not to run that story, you realize that if you keep doing this, you're going to get fired and you're not going to get paid for any stories and you're not going to have a career in this right. field. Um, so it, it, it assimilates people into the structure of not talking about those things by the penalty of, of it not being... Well, it's, yeah, that's that's a good point because it's, it's it was curious. So when that, and uh, when Abby Martin did that um, debate or with uh, Piers Morgan, and uh, basically was talking about media censorship and how it's all you know contrived and everything. And Piers Morgan made the comment that oh, I've never been influenced by you know anyone in the media to to, to run one story or another ever. And like he sort of said it in a sly a sly way. Uh, so that he could sidestep the, the reality of what actually goes on, where you're, it's not really that they prevent you from doing certain things. It's that you realize over time that you get promoted if you if you talk about certain things, and and, and um, you, you get fall promoted to the if you don't if you ignore certain issues, or or if you touch those issues, you'll fall to the bottom. So you learn rather quickly in in that uh, system of how to create media, a career, how to create a career, for so yourself you can or feed your family and, and have you know so. Oh, absolutely. It's it's a very interesting process that, uh, and then you look at media anchors like Dan Rather, who got his career and became famous uh, because he was he was actually fam famous for he was a no name news reporter from Dallas, but he covered the uh, first um, news coverage of the Kennedy assassination. He was the first person to tell the public on national TV that the shot came from the front, and he made a backwards motion like and pointed to the front of the head, front of the head, and uh, that was a that 
I mean, I mean, the back of the head. He said he said his his head was said to move violently forward, and uh, that would that's obviously not what happened in the Zapruder film. But he was the first person to view the Zapruder film and then tell people the public what was on the Zapruder film, and he lied about it. So he went along with whatever uh, was in place. Their agenda. Yeah, the agenda. Whether it was you know the CIA had infiltrated the media or whoever, but uh, powerful interests are, are the ones in control of a lot of these things often. And, and um, well, there's a lot of and again, you know, uh, the advertising firms that are in the background. Like for instance, Exxon uh, sponsored one of the presidential elections in 2008. Mm -hmm. So you know, it the people who are broadcasting this this coverage get their sales could be very hurt by what's talked about in that debate right and you know yeah, it's exactly. it's it's basically this internal sphere it it creates a blind eye to its own corruption and the people who support keeping that blind eye so that it can continue making money and expanding geopolitically and all the different agendas that it has are the people who are moved up in the bureaucracy because the bureaucracy is always top down you have at the top the type of people they're looking for the type of news anchors the type of uh, personal takes on things and they promote people based on what they're looking for up the chain to, to fulfill right. that system and if those people at one point say hey I don't feel morally okay doing this they can very easily be exchanged with somebody else who would take the money to do it and these are how these systems stay in place for so long they exchange people who are willing to and, and a lot of and them may, that, maybe that even have bias real world dynamic view where you're actually putting names in the place in, 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 the, in the structure of this pyramid I think that's closer to what what people's concept of the Illuminati actually is, you know, this pyramid structure where it's this top down, uh, this top down organization where, um, you know, one person controls, you know, you, you have one boss and he manages several other other managers who go and in turn manage other different parts and it all well, goes sure. back up to the company, but, to the top, the board of directors and the CEO. When we talk Illuminati, like that goes way back into 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah, I, I, the secret a lot societies of, and the stuff. The secret societies really... are expansions. I mean, a lot of my take on Skull and Bones, the secret societies is they're top elites who go into a, a brotherhood of alumni of other people in that same place and they take they do sacrificing rituals in the sense of sacrificing the public's greater good in order for their own benefit and they get used to protecting their brotherhood around this and these are people who are tapped into office who get to engage in cronyism they get to make huge amounts of money from corruption while appearing to be at the top of the corruption when the bankers and advisors and other people who are really the shot callers can remain hidden in the background and stay in play for as right. long as possible everything that they majority of the things that they've set forward other people take the blame who are those cronies and the reason it happens about, they can make so much money off they that. have these secret societies on all the elite campuses like harvard yale all the top ivy league schools so all like all the cream of the crop all the smartest and brightest kids they're tapping into those they're structures. tapping into those those people that's smartest and brightest and, and they're tapping them for future powers of posi positions of power and um but and all essentially brainwashing them with a lot of that occult ritualism and stuff which but, which uh, exists to a certain extent i don't think all of it has to do with that but I, they, it's definitely rituals of sacrificing well, exactly. others for yourself regardless I mean, if you want to take it further than that it's about there's a lot of people who who make a bigger deal, especially like uh, religious people who think it, they associate it with satanism and all this other stuff there's a lot it's of more about brotherhoodism <laughs> Really, what matters at the end of the day is who's 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 going where, who's connected to who, and who's you know getting put into positions of power, and who's pulling the strings. But another really, thing to talk like, about: one of the biggest influences of power structure today is not just a, a pyramid structure; it's it's interdependence, uh, like Ooh, the yeah, the banking structure. I mean, this is how you get people to do things against their will or without even knowing is. You know, you have a corrupt banking structure that maybe certain people don't know about. And as a business, they make decisions about what they want to do or outsource based on what they, the conditions of that economic environment. So there's all these things that foundations that people have to work with. And those are manipulated to kind of twist people's arms in different directions, even if they don't understand that's happening. So if you look at, like, for instance, um, the United States supporting international law and international multinational corporations before it even protects its own country. The reason for that would be uh, there was a study in 1996 uh, that showed that multinational corporations worldwide moved $7 trillion a day. And goods, put options, stocks, uh, derivatives, the whole amount of cash flow was $7 trillion a day. Uh, local economies outside of multinational corporations worldwide every single country produced four trillion dollars a year 
So the multinational corporations were able to move more money through all the countries in the world than those countries could do with their own local economies. And Jeez. as a result, the people who are in political positions in the United States have to protect the multinational corporations first because if they don't keep that structure afloat, they crash as well. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is because of that interdependence, they it's not that they don't have a choice, but they go along with the corrupt multinational sphere. Right, even if it's something they don't agree with. It's even like if it's something they don't agree with, even if it hurts America, because we're in such an interdependent position that if that system has gotten so big where it can't fall, that everybody else falls if they fall. And they're gotten in the position where they can do whatever they want because people have to support them even if it's not in their own interests. We're going to hold that thought. Um, quick word from our sponsor. Let's take a quick break. Alex? I want to queue up that break real quick. We're at the halfway mark. Are you a smoker and you need to quit? But you're the scariest guy that's out of this and like doing me. Located at 210 Americ Avenue in White Plains, New York. Visit our location and choose from a wide selection of exotic flavors. I want to talk a little bit of Obama on crystallizing public opinion. I know, I just got ran up. That was a rant. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yes. Does the stress of daily life seem just like too much? Yes. Are you simply fed up? Yes. Do you wish you could just make it all chill out? But how? Well, then yes. you need a Royal Grinder. Royal Grinder is a jumbo sized, two and a half inch diameter premium four piece herb grinder that fits in the palm of your hand with 50 closely interlined, everlasting, chunky teeth that will keep on shredding whatever enters your chamber. I can use it for all my herbs. If you hit them, the sibling knows every single drug that I've ever done. Thanks, Royal Grinder. I'll never feel shitty again. Order now at www.royalgrinders.com. That's www.royalgrinders.com. It's always going to come to the site. Right? Sure. I'm sound of the psyche at the One of my okay, favorite things about pharmacopoeia would be like, you know, how could Bush somebody do something like that? So, are, are we back? back? Wonderful. So we're back. Um, I want to. I want to. We were. We kind of left off with uh, the power structures and stuff. But I want to. I want to get back into some really important points about propaganda and how the power control. structures get their will to be represented in the minds of the people. Right. And um, there's a lot of other things. I, I I did a video on Harp back in the day where I I, I analyzed a lot of the um, claims that Harp was a method of mind control and looked into the, some of the history behind that. And I did a whole video on that. Um, and I got a good picture up there about with Project Harp that shows some brainwave things that, that that people think that these ELF frequencies are you know are actively manipulating our minds and causing and, and creating this mind control and all this stuff. And I, I sort of did a analysis on that in, in one of my past videos on, on Harp, and um, I showed how how the Harp was actually it's an over the horizon communication system for sending or, or for sending signals. It was developed from that, this original uh, array that was built by the Russians called the Woodpecker. And that would create this signal that would just show up on shortwave radios, and, and it showed up back in the 70s. And back when they first started hearing this Woodpecker signal, there was all this, the same exact theories, but it was the Russians doing mind control with all this stuff. And it's the same exact conspiracy theories, the same exact ideas. But um, it was it was it was uh, from the it was said that the Russians were doing this, and now it's the same exact thing. But now it's our, our American government has this ability well, and these sure. powers. But I really don't agree with that because the point I tried to make was that what they're trying to talk about is is through these active stimulations of electromagnetic frequencies on the brain. They're saying that they can literally control your mind. And I, I would argue that that is more brain control. That that's trying to control the brain itself. The, the frequencies our, of current brain states. They they might right. they you know, might be it, able to. It affect. might make you more energetic or more accepting of things. It might it might change the way that you process information right. in, in minor ways. The things. same way that 
you know, uh, listening, if you ever try listen to binaural beats and stuff like that, they can modulate your brainwave frequencies to help you focus or relax or go to sleep or have lucid dreaming and stuff like that. Um, on harp, it's a little bit harder to have it hit everybody in the same way. Um, but what we really right. wanted to talk about is the true form of mind control, which really isn't mind control or brainwashing. Uh, what it is, is it's ideology morphing. And what ideology is, is ideology is a, a perspective of worldview. The way that you make sense of the world, the way that you value things, the way that you judge things, the way that if something was presented to you, you would make a decision and act on it. I and, think of it as like ideology, like the logic or, of, of ideas. ideas, you know, like. But, but in many ways, ide ideology, your understanding of ideas influences how things show up to you as you experience the world. Right. So what they want to do is not only have the media send information to you in a certain way and try to use that to, to get their will to be represented in the, in the vision of the public, but they also want to give you the tools that you're more accepting of that type of information to begin with. So they want to change the way that you make sense of things, how you check up on information or don't check up on right. information, how you feel arrogant about always being right even though you haven't researched things. They want to they want to foster and try to make those things grow so that whatever they're feeding you is that much more responsive and, those, and that it, it sticks like, and holds for a longer period of time. Not only that is that work in, in, in the media, mainstream, like mass media manipulation, but like what you what you described sounds like you're reading exactly from like a counterintelligence playbook. Oh, absolutely. This is what you have to do. You have to understand who you're, what, what your target believes, the kinds of things that they're going to mislead them. And you need to put all those types of things out in the path to, to, to send them in all these different directions to mislead them. And many of the case studies we've looked at of propaganda use these types of models. So we've been exactly. lucky enough to learn from their tactics. And, and then it becomes very easy to just see it when it's right in front of you and being used on the general public. Another thing that I, I bring up all the time is we're in this age of so much corruption right now. And whenever you kind of do research and realize that something is a lie or something isn't as it's seen, what's staring you right in the face is the technique they use to try to manipulate you to believe that. Uh, whenever you understand that something's a lie, what you're currently looking at is the way they're trying to convince you of something. Right. And that is their technique. That's the mechanism of, of how they're trying to mislead the public. For example, and, with weapons of mass destruction, it was always fear. Fear was their way into your brain. Fear was convincing you to be afraid that there was these bad guys out there, and then also convincing you that they're going to protect you from the bad guys. So you don't have to be suspicious of them because they're they're, they're trying to just help you and have your look out for you with your best interests. Absolutely, rational process breaks down with fear. Right. And and if you want somebody to believe something that's irrational, one of the best way to get them into a state to do that is to have them be fearful. Yeah, fearful of something, afraid, you know, and it's usually, yeah, there's diff that, that was one, one important technique. Fear, fear is one, one method that I, that I, that it, that yeah, is, the fear. there's other method, methods too. Um, sometimes it's economic gain and, and, and thinking that you're going to get rich or, or, or um, you know, trying to manipulate. I read an interesting article, um, it was, I think it was in, uh, I forget what magazine this was in, but it was all about con artistry. And it was written by this guy who was a former con artist, and he just talked about all these con artist techniques, like ways that he would manipulate people and con people. And um, I really think that uh, a lot of what the CIA has done for their, you know, counterintelligence and, and that kind of stuff is is analyzing a lot of this con, art, con artistry and uh, a lot of the tactics and techniques that are used and these these all these subtle little tricks, um, because it's rather interesting. One of the things he pointed out in that article, which made a lot of sense. As he pointed out that um, people are driven by wants and needs. Everyone has wants and needs, and uh, it's all about figuring out what those wants and needs are, and then you can manipulate people through those. And sometimes it's loneliness uh, was one of them. Some people are just lonely, and they want people to talk to, they want a friend. Another one was uh, money, uh, wealth. Uh, one was, I, I think, um, lust or, or just, uh, I think, sex or whatever. And then it was... Um, uh, power, power is another one, and uh, you know people are very uh, corruptible and influenced by the the temptations of power and and having power, and um, and then it basically he, he he breaks it down. I think there was another one. I, I forget the fifth category, but uh, he basically says that you you had, your job as a con artist is to figure out which one of those five people will uh, which which type that person is that you're talking to and some people might be two you know maybe possibly three you know some people might have more than one in you know and some people it may be harder to crack you know
But he said the whole name of the game was identifying which type of person that how that person could be manipulated, what their wants and needs were. Can I jump in really, really quick before you finish that up? Sort of what we're talking about of ideology morphing. They're trying to create one type of personality is in the way they respond so that they can target their propaganda towards a single type of right, receptive so that way they don't have person. to they don't have five. to and that's through watching the media and taking this this notion of normalcy of what you see what is covered and what isn't covered becomes normal and if all of a sudden they cover something like uh corrupt like certain corruptions that they never covered before people might n not even think that it's it's something that exists because it hasn't been shown as often as all the other things they've been showing well, also so to some like, extent that they, they drive down the um public wants for for large amounts of money and uh, also power they, they drive down those through through their uh influence on on um culture and whatnot and they yeah. drive up the other ones because they want all the money. They want all the power. They don't want other people to be interested in, in, in pursuing those types of things. They want they want them to pursue the other. A philosophy of futility, yeah. as Walter <laughs> Lippmann said. Yeah, exactly. In, in 1928, when they were writing the Blueprints for Public Relations in the United States, they were basically saying, we don't want the public influencing policies for business or war or other things like that. We want to have full control over that. What we want them to do is, and this is a direct quote from it, we want them to develop a philosophy of utility. I'm one person, what can I do? Uh, focus their attentions on superficial consumption, just fashion, entertainment, uh, sports, and basically learn to align themselves with people who are already inside of political or leadership positions rather than have their own opinion of themselves. They learn to say, yes. I support this guy and this is what I, this is my stance, is this guy's stance, rather than doing their right. own research and coming to their own stance themselves. Right, rather than, rather than identifying themselves as an individual or understanding that people have different viewpoints and perspectives on lots of different things and that we may all disagree on lots of different things from time to time. And uh, there may be other things that we do agree on. But, uh, yeah, they identify with these sort of people rather than being independent of themselves. And uh, It's the group thought technology. And, and they also think about how would others judge me if I believe such and such. And that influences a lot of the process of whether somebody will think through something or just shrug it off, you know. Um, I, I really think that, yeah, I, I, we mentioned that on the last uh, one we did, is the power of others to think, do your thinking for you, and how much power you let other people have when you let other people do your, do your thinking for you. And this, you may not even be conscious that you're letting other people think for you. You could just be going out in public and being self-conscious of what, you, you know, like, oh, uh, what am I doing out here? Like, uh, How are people looking at me in this? At me, I'm going to adjust the way I'm acting based on my my perspective of how people are seeing me right like uh, for example a fat girl going to the beach in a bikini you know or like, something like that yeah. well sure but you know it, it could it could be like such an awesome person and you know one of the most caring thoughtful persons in the world but the whole thing is what are the value systems that our culture values why are they judging people Based you know what, things, what are yeah. the values set up are they meaningful values are they superficial values and if they are superficial values what is the end to them is it buying more products for beauty control feeding the economy more by you know just Diet never pills. being content with yourself I, I mean in many ways um advertising is anti-therapy the whole point of an advertising is to say you are incomplete without such and such you know they build a hole in you and then say you can fill the hole with our product yeah um it's the opposite of saying you should be content with who you are yourself um, but if you say you're fine the way you are and you're a beauty company, you're not going to sell anything. Right. So it's all about changing people's understanding of themselves and view of the world so that they act in a different way as a result. And, and that's really what ideology is about. It's about that, that mental lens of how people see the world, how they see themselves in the world, and how they make decisions and act as a result of that understanding. And it's something that constantly is changing. You know, or, or sticking, you know, if they're really stubborn, it might just stay the same way their whole life. Who knows? Oh, that philosophy of futility is something I've really tried to break down. Like, just uh, if if everyone got up and tried to make a change, like, we would, we, and we all, like, work together, I mean, we could do so much. And um, even just as one person. Especially with the internet. I think of futility, like, not, now I don't need, uh, I don't need to get on the news in order to reach thousands of people. I can just put videos on online and reach thousands of people. My favorite stuff. way that you explain it is, sorry to jump in, but Jeremy, he's like, I give lectures while I'm brushing my teeth. I give lectures while I'm sleeping. I give lectures while I'm eating because people can play my video on cue at any time and keep watching it. You, you put it together once and you put it out there and it shares and it spreads. And you have this voice that's constantly hitting people even when you're not actively involved in it. 
Right. And even one person, one person with a light can spread. Where I have to go to work and I have to do other things, and then I spend them. You know, like I'm making a difference. You know, even even just one person. So there's, I, yeah, the philosophy of utility, man. And I just wonder how many people out there have just not even attempted to do what I, what I, what like the things that we we do because they, and, they, and other activists and stuff. Well, the whole idea is, you know, potential and, activists that just instead of becoming activists, they decided that it was few, too futile to to become activists. The philosophical term for it is called agency. In the same way that like an actor will get an agent to promote them, the notion of agency is your understanding of what you can accomplish yourself and how you limit your development as a result of undermining what you can do based on what you think you can do. Right. So some people could say, oh, I'd never be able to do such and such, like learn how to sing or whatever it is. And as a result, they never go down the path of even trying to learn to see if it's possible. So the, the notion of agency is... People who develop a philosophy of futility don't really act because they've told themselves that in the world they live, they can't do anything. It may not be the truth. They might have so many potentials to make change. But if it makes sense to them, they've told themselves that that's the world they live in, they're going to act based on that understanding. And, and what the media tries to do is they try to say, you know, <laughs> we need these political players to do all this stuff. You're just one person. We just want to hear your input. That's all. Yeah. You know, and uh, oh, one thing to bring up that's very important is uh, this concept called pressure from above, pressure from above, pressure from below. Um, it was used during 9/11 or lots of other events. It's a way the media can censor certain things while showing other things and create this notion of support for something, even though it may not exist to the extent that they're promoting it. And what they'll do is, like after 9/11, they'll show lots of clips. And it, as far as media clips goes, you know, when you watch uh, a 20-minute night nightly news show you know, with commercials filling up the other portion of the time. They, the footage for their things, they went and recorded five hours, six hours, seven hours of footage for some of those 30 second pieces. And what they do is they cut down all the footage until 30 seconds. And it's a very, you know, it's a very contrived and, and conscious process of what is stripped out and what is left. And what they do is during events like 9-11, stuff like that, um, They'll show lots of people saying, this is unacceptable, something has to be done. They'll have the reactionary response. So they won't take the, what the reaction should be, what we should do, but they'll just show lots of people saying, this is something needs to be done. Something needs to be right. done, something needs to be done. Same thing with the mass shootings, the school shootings and stuff. They like, use the same technique even in the over newspaper. And over again. They use this in the newspaper even before TV. And then what they would do is, the next thing they would show is, people inside the political structure, positions of power saying, we're here to protect you. We're here for you. This is what you need to do to accomplish those goals. Yeah. And even though there might be all these other discussions about ways we could go, they, they focus in on one specific bubble and they go back and forth. Something has to be done. This is what we need. Something has to be done. This is what we need. And the people watching all day have this repetition of, I know a solution to bring us back to stability. So no callers so far. I mean, I posted that number up. I was hoping we get some people to call in, but, um, that's all right. Yeah, we can that's keep all right. going. We'll keep going things. as long as as long as we can. If we if we do get any calls, just uh, let us know. But, so uh, one thing I kind of wanted to touch on, unless you want to talk about something else, um, the the way that nine eleven was censored and kind of the understanding of all this evidence and science that really shows that the government had complete complicity in it, and um, even the stand down orders. There's no way somebody in a cave could write the stand down orders as Dick Cheney and carry it out on that day. Right. Um, so just to talk about the way that they've hid that information over the years and the different techniques they've gone to kind of muddy the water of the actual um, verifiable evidence that shows uh, the official story cannot be true. Well, not just not just not with nine eleven, but like cold fusion or other topics too. Like they had they turn into this mass media, uh, you know. It was like a, I don't know. It's like a a high school football game or something where it's like they had the one team come out and say oh these people are all frauds and they made this all up and um that was like mit and caltech and and then everyone else rallied around them and you create a spectacle and then you say this is the deciding spectacle that it's a what is it uh flop for flop <laughs> oh, you know so it basically what they did is they set it up to we're going to get to the bottom of this right now and they prematurely made them you know uh, set it up to fail, just like with the 9-11 Commission. Yeah. With Lee Hamilton. Yeah, it's interesting how, um, you know, we can just put all of our faith in one single body 
of evidence or a single body of authority um, like Galileo and the Catholic Church, you know, like With the world being flat. Absolutely. You, you know, but power in numbers is not a truism. Just because a lot of people believe something just means that that was presented to them in a way that had them accept that as a belief. Right. The, the way that conism or even magic works is to have you believe one thing and something else actually happening at illusions the same time. Stuff, yeah. The whole purpose of illusion is that that takes place very regularly. And a lot of people are not in tune with when it's happening. Yeah, and I'm glad we covered in that first, uh, the first episode of this, this uh, thing, when the first time I had you on, was uh, we covered a lot about the, the methods that we use, or I use as a scientist and, and also as a philo him as a philosopher, we use for analyzing the truth and coming to conclusions about things. And it's we're very, we try to be very aware of these other tricks that and these uh, techniques that are used to manipulate people. For example, um, you know the conspiracy thing where 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 we we are we we know nine eleven. We've seen the evidence for that. And it's overwhelming. But yet, I'm not one of those people who just comes along and says, "Oh, everything's an inside job. Every event that happens has got to be a conspiracy." You know, I'm crying wolf like uh, you know Alex Jones. No, no. It's about we we came to the conclusion that. Accuracy is more important than ego, and the people who want to prove themselves right rather than adjust to new information are people who are more about ego. And you know, the the most important thing is being honest with ourselves when we're doing the research and not being afraid of what we're going to find or, you know, how it's going to change our current beliefs on things. And and that's what really leaves you open to discover, to get to the bottom of things. You know, a lot of people who won't look at the evidence for nine eleven are afraid to or already have opinions on it, and it blocks them from understanding one of the most important events in the per progress towards the collapse of this country. But uh, and another quick point I wanted to make about that, back to that, that House of Cards analogy where I thought that this wrecking ball was just going to come, come and smash down the mainstream media. And I, what I've noticed instead is that, you know, as, as great as we have, the, the, as great of a tool the Internet has, is for us for spreading information and getting, you know, the truth out there and accurate information and, and doing research and and comparing sources and verifying things and whatnot, as good of a tool as that is, it's also like a double-edged sword because in, in addition for, for truth being able to spread at this high speed and, and rapidity of just, you know, me posting something and then just gets shared and shared all over, lies can also be spread just as fast. In fact, lies sometimes spread faster because they're more or easy myths to Or disinformation. Myths um, and disinformation, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, the whole purpose of reevaluating things and, and always leaving your belief on things open is that with new information can be new insight. Right. And, and if you overlook new information with new insight, you're stuck with outdated beliefs. Yeah, it, I just thought it was interesting how, you know, it, the Internet has been such a hub for misinformation, disinformation, deception and whatnot. And and I really do feel like there are active forces working against, you know, certain well, there have been documented cases of of people hired to spread disinformation and stuff like that. I mean, this has been very well documented at this point. But one of the things that we've talked about before that's very important is this notion called spectrum of concern. So it's like a range of what people are concerned with. And if if you can kind of bring up a generation to value MTV and superficiality and all these materialistic things over actual right. content, you can have a video or documentary on YouTube or you can have a book out there that explains all these concepts. But what they're doing with their time is focusing on the things that right. they're concerned with. Or so, interest. So, so if they're searching for interest. a Soldier Boy video or you know something to do with that, that's, uh, that, that's the experience that they're getting. They're on this YouTube interface that could present them, connect them with any information that's out there. Right, but like they, all the 13-year-olds on YouTube who say Lil Wayne's the best rapper ever. <laughs> but you the know? whole idea is they, they get to decide what they're exposed to. So it's very, from the propagandist perspective, it's very important to morph people's ideologies so that you can control where they want to put their attention and right. keep that away from what you don't want seen and keep it on things that produce money and keep them distracted. Right. Sports. Dragon Ball Z. Oh, and speaking of sports, let's let's get into a couple different things. Although sports sports can be a great pastime, it's great to get in shape. It's a good entertainment as well. Uh, one thing that's very interesting is the connections between sports and war. Um, it, many ways, people who are s around sports a lot of their life, watching sports, so used to doing it, they get a logical system of analyzing things in their head that's kind of similar to the way that they judge and rule things through sports. And if you connect it to war. If you look at sports, all you're doing is you're taking two different 
territories and you're pitting them against each other arbitrarily for, for no reason other than to play a game. And people get used to us versus them paradigms of I support this team or this government or this politician specifically because we live in the same spot. And it's a way to grab lots of people for agendas and to use them with propaganda, even if they disagree on other other right. other issues. It doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican. If you live in the same area, I'm going to present it to you based on territory, not based on belief. And that way right. you can group as much of the population as possible for whatever you're trying to do. If you look at sports, whenever your team is playing, people want their team to win. And if you look at Bill O'Reilly, the way he's explaining the Iraq war, he's like, well, do you want to win or do you want to lose? He puts it in the same perspective. These people are so used yep. to you know, and, and the same way people support their uh, their home team, their favorite team, even if they're doing horrible, they'll do the same thing with politicians. They'll take yeah. on the politicians as if it's their home team, and they'll defend the politician's ego as if it's their own right. ego. Right. Like, I still support Obama, you know? And like, I got, I've got a couple of Facebook friends, uh, people I went to high school with and stuff. I post a lot of anti-Obama stuff. As well as anti-Bush stuff. As well as anti-Bush stuff, you know? So, like, I'm not just anti- I'm not just anti-corruption, and anti-Democrat or something, you know? Like Anti-continuous corruption. I'm anti-continuous con corruption, <laughs> yeah. For, and, oh, my God, I don't even want to get started talking talking about 2016 with uh the heb jeb and hillary uh oh sure before instead uh, of that we should talk about the fcc we should we talk got about like two minutes left net neutrality so, up, so all right so what... so really quick i'll let you wrap up i just wanted to touch um people should definitely start reading up on the fcc net, net neutrality what's going on they're basically voting on the ability to have certain websites pay in order to have the full speed of the internet given to them and the people who aren't approved or don't pay get much slower speed. So what it would allow is the top corporations to only allow the mainstream media sites to have good feeds while they could just really slow down all the alternative media where it was almost hard to even view it. Oh, uh, it, it basically removes all neutrality over who can get their message out on the web in the same way. Right. And, and, and the thing is, there is no regulation that's already set on they the web. Already have the such web is advantage. already open. The web is designed. The interweb is not a controlled structure. You have to go and change it for the sinister purpose of doing this in order for it to happen. This is not to solve issues, to make things better. This is a power grab over whose yeah. websites are the ones that people are going to go to. They want it all. They, 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 already, they already have They already have such control over the mainstream media. 90% of the corporations own just Absolutely. by six corporations. If, if only, they want more. They want more. They want the internet too. But man. if only, I, I mean, for political reasons and for censorship and all that as well, but if only just to bring more advertising into their streams where people are viewing them more and they're getting more advertising money. I mean, if you just take that alone oh, as God, the issue. And what's going on with Facebook with their advertising and, and, and selling out completely and changing around the news feed and then putting up crap fucking shit in my news feed that I don't want. Oh, I hate that, man. I, oh, yeah. I and a, a lot that. of stuff is metadata. It's all about data mining. They, you know, like if you go to and check out something in Amazon, as you go around the web, you'll see that same ad posting in your face. Yeah, and in Google some AdSense ways, will pick up in some it. ways, if I'm going to get advertised, I'm, it would be nice, you know, to have it something that I might actually buy. But what it really is doing is it's invading our privacy. It's building up profiles on each person so that they can be targeted in ways to pitch them either a product or a political position or something. They're trying to plot out where people are in their mental state so that they can right. and then the target propaganda and pitches and things that get them to do stuff uh, accordingly. And, and, and this is why it's so hard for them to do that. They want to change the ideology. They want to change the way that people make sense of the world right. so that they don't have to target five, ten different people. They can, they can have a, a left and a right and just go directly towards those. Um, the whole idea is they want to streamline their message to as many people as possible and bypassing as many walls that people would block that message on either end. So they're finding the common denominator of spreading propaganda yeah spreading propaganda well this has been an interesting discussion as always on mind control and really what mind control really is because people have this notion that it's just electronic or drugging people or uh, other external stimuli they don't understand it's as simple it's as watching the news and about, changing your beliefs and, and what, the way that you see the world and make decisions right what comes into your reality it's all about shaping and molding your reality and your 
the reflection that you have of the world, your understanding of the world, and, your and ideas. And the truth movement is about doing the opposite. We're about shifting people's reality to actually doing their own research, checking up on yes. things, proving their beliefs. Knowing the scientific method, knowing what real skepticism is, knowing you know how to how to debate and and how to come to conclusions, how to not only be skeptical of uh, information they come across, but also their own beliefs in themselves. But anyways, we'll end on that, and it's been an awesome hour. Thank you so much, Zen Live TV. Have a good rest of the day.